What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. Well, you can't make it look much easier than Shavkat Rachmanov made it look against Neil Magny last night. Neil Magny's a number 10 fighter. He is a legend of the sport. I think last night was his 27th UFC walk. So you're talking about a grizzled veteran that knows all the tricks, got utterly dominated by a young, promising up-and-comer. And that really just begs the question, where is the ceiling on Shavkat Rachmanov? Yeah, who knows? But all I can say is it's very difficult to get to the UFC. It's even more difficult to win. It's even more difficult than that to stay in the division, uh, stay in the UFC. And when you have 27 fights within the organization, the the premier organization. And most of them wins. Yeah, th that means you're, you're winning most of your fights. It's against the best of the best. And you're able to keep job security. Neil Magny is an absolute stud. And to see him lose the way he did to Rachmanov was... Uh, alarming because that means this dude is legit he's probably the next Hamzat Jemayev as soon as more people start to know about him they're gonna really get on that hype train and I think we're gonna see a big push for this guy and that made it what 16 and 0 last night uh, yeah yeah something about like that and I believe he rounded it out to an even eight and eight eight yeah. knockouts eight submissions right so 100 percent finishing rate and I'm not gonna say that Neil Magny just was you know totally uh overwhelmed with this guy i did think that neil probably could have presented a few more issues for rachmanov or at least delayed some of the onslaught that was you know inevitable essentially but he's he was throwing some body kicks right at the beginning of the fight and that's kind of the worst place you want to throw kicks right at the beginning when you know you're not slippery they're not sweaty and slippery and you've got a guy who's really good at either catching kicks wrestling looking to wrestle and and essentially that means grab a, a leg you're basically giving it to him i i just thought that that was a little bit of a flaw in the game plan and maybe he just thought he would throw some leg kicks maybe mix it up throw some high kicks but it didn't work out for him he wound up on his back very very early i think that first round certainly drained him and then uh you know the second round came and it was kind of a similar story to the first one and look that submission must have been pretty tight because uh, there was only a few seconds left on the clock and Neil still had to tap. If you make a, a veteran like Neil Magny tap with five seconds left in a round, he, he was left with no option at that point. He's the kind of guy that if he could have toughed that out, he definitely would have. So that was, must have been an extremely tight guillotine. And Rachmanov looked for it a couple of times before he actually snatched it up. You could see he was kind of fighting for it. And then he would realize he didn't quite have it the way he wanted it, recalibrate, throw a few more strikes and go for it again. And I think it was on the second or third attempt that he realized that he had the hand positioning that he wanted and the arm was far enough across the, the neck that he could actually get it. And he quickly pulled guard blocked uh, Neil's uh, ability to walk around him with his with his foot that was on the bottom and it was just a beautiful textbook guillotine finish I do agree with you though I think Neil Magny should have implemented a little bit better of a game plan as far as the kicks go one thing that you can use as a tool at your disposal to disrupt a wrestler is really good low leg kicks. You know, kick the knee, kick the calf, kick the meaty part of the leg, which is probably the best place to kick because that's where all the power and, and movement comes from out of the leg. So if you do, and it's also harder to catch. And if you start reaching for kicks that are low, then you set yourself up to get kicked in the head because your opponent's seeing that you're reaching for low kicks and then they're going to fake a low kick and send something high. But that body kick, is the worst for a really good wrestler like Rachmanov, especially as you said early in the fight when nobody's sweaty because that's right there in perfect position to be caught, which is exactly what Rachmanov did with those kicks. You don't give a good wrestler like that your leg, especially that early in the fight. So I think it was a it was a mistake on Neil's part, but you can't take anything away from Shavkat. He absolutely capitalized on every opportunity he had in that cage, every position that the fight took place. He dominated, whether it was against the cage. He had some beautiful outside leg trips to get the fight to the ground. He looked good on his feet. Neil Magny is a very good striker. He's got a lot of knockouts to his name. And Shavkat looked very calm, very patient, picked his shots. Then when the fight actually did get to the ground itself, he did a beautiful job of keeping a, a good, strong half guard position, making Neil shell up, not able to defend much, throwing good shots, and ultimately finishing with that guillotine. And then he called out Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I, I'm a Stephen Wonderboy Thompson fan, always will be, kind of a diehard fan for Wonderboy, but... God, I hope they don't make that fight because I don't even think that would be competitive. Well, you know, I say that some, or you say that sometimes, and then we go out there and we watch Wonder Boy beat pretty much everybody that's not a world champion or in a, you know, a number one contenders match. So Wonder Boy is very legit, but styles do make matchups, and Rachmanov's a nightmare for him. So 
Uh, I don't want to see that happen. It kind of sucks when you watch somebody call out Wonder Boy and almost feels like nobody wants to actually call him out, but they know stylistically Rachmanov matches up well against him. He is a big name. He is high in the ranks, and it just sort of makes sense to call him out when other people aren't available. They don't have dance partners, and Wonder Boy is usually a pretty game opponent. He's usually down if you call him out. If you, if you mention his name, he's not a, a he's not a punk. He's going to say something back. If you, He's a dog, even though he's a nice dog. If you He'll back him into a corner. He'll accept your call out in a very friendly manner. Right, right. If you back him into a corner, even though he's a nice dog, he's still gonna he's still gonna come out fighting. So I, I hope as a Wonder Boy fan that fight doesn't happen. But smart on Rachmanov to at least have somebody on the tip of his tongue if and when he got his hand raised because I hate more than anything when these fighters get asked by every time by the commentator, hey, who would you like to fight uh, next? And they say, you know, it doesn't matter to me. There's been so many cases where we've just heard the people that know what they're doing in the sport call for names. They know their favorable matchups and they get that yep. fight. If you want to have any control of your own career, you need to start calling for the people that you think you can beat. And it's not a, a bully mentality. You just stylistically are looking at the opponents, looking at the field of your division, and you're able to pick and choose who you want to fight next. I think it's a brilliant thing to do. A lot of people choose not to do it. They want to look like a tough guy. It's like, guys, we already know you're tough. Mixed martial arts is about as brutal as a sport can be in this day and age. And uh, we don't need to, you to say, just, you know, deal me from the bottom of the deck. I don't care who it is. While that sounds cool, it's foolish as far as running your business and running your career as yeah. a fighter. So I personally like that Rachmanov had somebody in mind. I don't think he'd shy away from op any opponents at 170. You know, I'd love to see him in there with the other undefeateds, the Chemayevs, the Bradys, some of these new guys. That, the new wave yeah. of 170 is coming and. um while we'll probably see these guys all line up and fight each other over the next three to five years, I, I think he'll likely try to go for some of these bigger names, some of these legends of the sport like a Wonderboy Thompson that he could probably get and he can probably win, and that would be cool to add to the list of names that he already has. Definitely, and I think the UFC is going to keep that ace in the hole, so to speak, of Rachmanov versus Chemayev in their back pocket and let that fester and build a little bit longer because right. that's going to be – I think we all know that fight's going to happen at some point, and I think we all know that fight's going to be insane. Yeah. I mean, to me, Rachmanov is everything that Chemayev is, except he doesn't scream on the mic afterwards. And, you know, Chemayev is very brash, and it's something unusual to see out of a fighter from that part of the world because you think of the great fighters – from that part of the world, Islam Makashev, Habib, Rachmanov, these guys are very humble people. They're very quiet. They're very respectful. They let their their skills do the talking, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Hamzat Chemayev is totally different from that. He's like a, a, a Russian Conor McGregor that's somewhat watered down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, while Rachmanov doesn't quite have the star power that Chemayev has right now, beating somebody like Chemayev later in his career could make him a big star, even though he doesn't have that brash personality but i think the ufc's 170 prospects are just insane right now 170 probably has the best prospects in the game and i think that sean shelby and the matchmakers are going to look at rachmanov and that call out of wonder boy thompson and say guess what wonder boy is a game fighter as you said we can actually use that to our advantage he will accept a rachmanov fight we think that's a very favorable matchup for Rachmanov. We don't have a lot of juice left to squeeze out of Steven, so we might as well just uh, put him in there with one of these studs and let them build their star power and their fame off of him. But you're absolutely right about the call-out. When you just did something like easily defeat Neil Magny in the way that he did, and then you have a microphone held in front of your face, in front of a couple hundred thousand people that are in awe of what you just did, that's your opportunity. Take it. And so I think the call out for Rachmanov, while me as a Wonder Boy fan, I hate that for Wonder Boy, but I really respect it. And I think it was super smart. Yeah, it'd be a fun fight to see. You know, Rachmanov's shown us that he's very good at sticking to a game plan. He doesn't let emotions or uh, the crowd or any sort of cheering or booing get to his head. He doesn't change his game plan, doesn't change his demeanor. He sticks to you know, showcasing his skills and doing what he does best. And I think that's going to pay off for him in the long run. You know, the thing about Chemayev is he is that character. He is that brash fella. And 
you're going to see him get a little bit motivated or a little bit pissed off when the crowd boos or when the crowd goes crazy. You know that he's that kind of guy. He's an he's an entertainer yeah. first and foremost. Rachmanov is very entertaining, but he doesn't seem like he gets influenced by anything while he's in there. He seems like he's very much even keel all the way throughout. So that's a fight I can't wait to see happen. I know it'll happen sooner than later, but uh, you, you've got a cerebral type versus just a a loose cannon, and both of them have all the skills in the world. So hopefully that fight will happen soon. We got a lot to talk about. I'm sure over the next few years we'll be making plenty of videos on Shavkat Rachmanov, Hamzat Chemaev, Sean Brady, you name it. 170 is as hot as it gets right now, and it seems like they've got the next generation and the future of the division in good hands. No doubt about that. Guys, drop us a comment and let us know what did you think about Shavkat's performance against Neil Magny. And if you haven't already, we would appreciate a subscribe to the channel and a like on this video. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Peace.